I called him. I walked in the club and when I seen when I opened those beads and I seen them red and blue lights and I seen these girls on stage and money was just falling. It's just like everything was in slow motion. I'm like, this is where I need to be in. Mm. Yeah, we on boss talk one on one. Yeah, we gonna talk. Something that I put up with. Um, I think that I wanted love so much to where it's like I found myself like buying um people's love to give me I, and I didn't know that it was a term for it until after I went through it and got through it and then understood um that what was happening um one guy I was dating um for a while when before I became a dancer mm -hmm. um a stripper um I met him at a club and you know he looked nice looking or whatever I told my friend to go get his number this was probably like 2008 um, and, um, and this was still in Houston or you had already, no, this was in Houston. Okay. I moved from Houston in 2017. Okay. Um, and we start, we start conversing and we start, uh, talking and then, you know, we start going on dates and stuff. And then we start, um, we start like being together, but we never said we was together. You know how you just start talking to somebody and y'all don't have a conversation. He don't really ask you to be his girlfriend right. or nothing like that. You kind of just kind of go with so it. So no commitment really. Yeah. But. I felt like we was in a relationship. So I just started like buying him stuff, like whatever he wanted. Like I started buying him shoes. He used to smoke cigarettes and I hate cigarettes. That's one thing I put up. I was buying him cartons of cigarettes. I was buying him TVs. I was buying him just all type of stuff. And the crazy thing about it that I didn't realize was that he always came to my house and I never went to his house. Mm. Um, and then even so um, after that, like me, I was living on the South side at this time. He was living um, on the Southwest side. Um, of Houston and so I moved all the way from um, the, the south side to Derry Ashford uh, to be closer to him to be closer to him and what's crazy what happened when I did move in that house maybe like a few weeks later the whole house flooded out mm. that was like a red flag like and it was my house but now that I'm thinking back on it I'm just thinking about the little things that was happening right so I met him at the club, so we would always meet at the club every weekend. Mm -hmm. That was our thing, me and my friend's thing. He used to have this blue Hummer, this blue, you know what I'm saying, uh, fur jacket or whatever. He just looked it good to me, so it was just something that I feel like, okay, I want this. So after we dated and we kicking it and, you know what I'm saying, that's my man in my head. Um, probably like a few months later down the line, um, I seen this girl um, in a parking lot, and she was like, yeah, there she go right there, there she go. And I'm like, huh, there she go. Mm -hmm. So at this time, I had a 1992 Ford Taurus. I parked across the street um, because I wasn't, it was me and like six girls, and we would all get in the car together and go to the club or whatever. That was our little weekend thing. I think I was probably like 17, 18 at this time. Like, mm -hmm. wasn't even able to get in the club. <laughs> but still was getting in that mug, fake IDs and uh -huh. all of that. So when I'm walking across the median, she was like, come get this ring. And he pulls up on side of her. And so he like, man, I don't even know her. I don't know her. I don't know her name or nothing like that. Like, and it just broke me. Like, I literally, it felt like a movie. I, I fell on my knees. I broke down in the median and I just start crying. By this time, my friends, they running out the club. They're like, Brittany, what's wrong? What's wrong? And so they all looking at him and they cursing him out while they trying to pick me up to walk to the car. And I'm just snotting and crying and all of this and all of that. And so that what made me like at, at that moment, it just made me realize, like, damn, me and Ken really, like, make this whole <coughs> this whole lie up. And they can live, like, so many different, Two lives. different lives. And how I can compare that to my father is, like, he lived 17 different lives. To have mm. so many different houses with so many different kids. And, you know, it's really like a form of manipulation. Because you can manipulate a person to make them feel like that they're the only one when you have a couple of only ones mm -hmm. and you got a couple of people feeling like that and that's really what made me become a dancer because when i used to be in the regular clubs all the time this guy came up to me and he was like um come to my club i want you to come dance in my club and i'm like i am dancing at this time i'm doing the ratchet i'm you know what i'm saying doing, doing, free. doing the dougie and stuff mm -hmm. like that but he's not talking about that type of dancing he's talking about stripping, stripping. so mm -hmm. i'm like i am dancing he was like no come to the strip club and i looked at him and i just always kept his card so after that happened... And you've been to the strip club before that? No, never. Okay. I never had been to a strip club before he told me to come okay. to his club. So after that tragic moment happened, I called him immediately as soon as I got home. Mm. Like, that's how I was like, fuck this. I'm not... Can I curse on you? Yeah. Okay. I was like, F this. I'm not even... Like, I don't even want to go to the regular clubs no more because I feel like I he had blew up the spot. Like, I felt embarrassed. I was sad. I was just everything. I called him. I walked in the club and... 
when I seen when I opened those beads and I seen the red and blue lights and I seen these girls on stage and money was just falling, it's just like everything was in slow motion. I'm like, this is where I need to be in. Mm. And so I became a dancer. And then after I became a dancer, crazy thing about it is the girl that said, come get this ring from the guy, she ended up being the number one dancer at that club. Wow. Wow. Yes. So by this time, I'm I'm dancing at the strip club. And you club. knew who she was. Did she know who you were at yes, that time? Yes, we both knew who each other was. But I didn't I didn't find out that she was the dancer at the club till like a few weeks later because she wasn't coming to work as much. Mm -hmm. So when I seen her one day, I'm like, what the? F and then I'm dancing for her client. So she, you know, we we have to be in the same area as mm -hmm. each other because she's been here. I'm new. You know, I'm the new girl. I'm a freshman. All of, you know, I'm saying men right. want to dance me and stuff like that. So what's crazy is me and her end up being cool we end up getting cool i thought she would have started trying to fight you or something no we end up getting cool because now i'm the new girl and she's been there so now all the men want me to dance for them right so either you're gonna be dumb and be in your feelings or you're gonna keep it business and keep it player and be like well she let me get cool with her because if she making the money and we dance together we could split the money down the middle right you know what i'm saying so i wasn't even looking at it looking at it at that at that moment mm -hmm. i was so still stuck on him to where it's like i was like and this is just a thought that ran through my head, but mm. I never acted on this thought. Mm. I wanted to be with him so bad to where it's like, I'm like, man, I'm dancing. Like, I give him my money that I'm dancing. You were still in love with him even with all of this? I was still in love with him, even through all of that. Because, you know, he called and tried to make up and all of this and all of that. But then he found out we were both working at the same I was about club. to say, what did he say then? He, it was kind of like we didn't even really, like, talk about him. He didn't talk about her. I didn't talk about him to her. None of that. And it she was never just, mentioned him she to She never you. mentioned him to me either because we both were still fucking with him, like, low-key. Wow. So, um, fast forward, now I'm in the club, you know, because I started on the backstage. I didn't want to take no clothes off and nothing. Once I learned the game in, like, two months, I was on the front stage. I was getting naked. I was having the outfits. Now I'm the motherfucking top bitch in the club mm -hmm. or whatever. So, um, we now our clientele is the same people, the same dudes. And so one day they had open they had left the club open past the three o'clock five o'clock time we stayed in there or whatever overnight and I'm sitting on a guy, uh, one side of a guy lap and she's sitting on the other side and then she just ended up kissing me and she became my girlfriend. That is wow. <laughs> no, I'm writing a book. And then <laughs> hold on. And then what did he say about this? We never told him. So we never, we never even, we never even told him because, she, like, she the one, like, that's the first girl that I ever like been with, been with when she like broke my lesbianism, right? When it came into that market, and I just, I, I don't know if it was like a plot to like just get close to me because, you know, I'm the new girl and now I'm the top girl or whatever, right? But, and and the niggas spending money on both of us, and I'm or, sure she probably knew you were still messing with him. It was just an unsaid thing. It was like we both loved him so much to where it's like we just never spoke about him. When we spent our time together, we spent our time together. And I guess he had time for her and he had time for me. Mm. So but, how did it break up? How did it all end? I'm curious now. How did it break up? So um, eventually more clubs start, bless you, more clubs start opening up um, on, on different sides of town. Um this was at Blue Flame. Mm -hmm. So Blue Flame was on um, Macowan by the jailhouse, railroad tracks, and then they started opening up clubs. Um, so th the relationship lasted for a while because Blue Flame is here. No, Blue Flame in Houston. Oh, they have a Blue Flame in Houston they too? They had one. This is when Big Keith was the owner of Blue Flame. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't Big know. Keith I just knew the one here. Yeah, Big Keith was the owner of, of, of Blue Flame. That's the only Blue Flame I ever heard of was back there until I came to Atlanta. Okay. okay. Yeah, but um, Dream Star opened up. Um, and then Platinum City opened up or whatever. So we kind of just start like everybody started just kind of like migrating person, to right. yeah migrating to different clubs or whatever the case may be. And I start oh Harlem Nights. I was working at Harlem Nights. Eric was the DJ. Uh, shout out to Harlem Nights. Yeah, Eric was the <laughs> DJ at uh, at Harlem Nights. I went over there. I started dancing over there. Um, and then that's when I just like changed my name and I became Delicious. And um, Delicious. The actual delicious. She came in the club one night and I was like, Well, my dancer name is Delicious. Can you give me um your honor so I can use your name? And she was like, Yes, girl, you look good, you can use my name. So my whole dancing career, my name um was delicious. So I moved to another club and I started working at Platinum City. I started dating uh this uh an, an, another guy or whatever. And so So you broke it off with him at that point. Yeah, I broke it off with him because it was just it Got was just played too out. Much. Yeah, and then what's crazy is oh, this is how I, this is how I broke it off with them. I missed this part. 
one day he had called me. So, mm-hmm. you know, we studied talking on the phone, me and her study, you know, dealing Listen with each other, right. whatever. But I end up hearing him and I end up hearing a girl talking. He actually butt dialed me and they was talking about me so bad. Like, literally, she just left being with me. I was just with him two days before. And that was the girl. That was the girl. And they was together. And they was talking about me so freaking bad. I started recording the conversation. I ended up recording the conversation. And then he started trying to hit me up. And I'm like, nigga, like, you and her was just in the car talking about me for a whole hour straight. Like, he had to look at his phone. Like, and he tried to deny, deny, deny. But at that point, I just knew, like, nah, bitch, they just using you. Wow. Yeah, and... That is crazy. You went through a hell of a situation. You know what's so crazy? crazy? I put this story up on my Instagram. I was like, let me tell y'all how I ended up becoming a dancer. But that's how I ended up becoming a dancer because I got my my feelings hurt. And I'm just like, man, fuck that. I'd rather just go to a whole nother club. I don't even want to be on this type of scenery no more. And then still fell into it. And, you know, it, it, it was just. How long did you dance for? I danced for about five years. Five mm-hmm. years. I stopped dancing in like 2000. 11. Okay. I got signed in 2010. Actually, I stopped dancing in 2010. I got signed to Cash Money in 2010. And so my song was on the radio and I was actually still in the club. But when, okay, so you started dancing because of that situation. Why did you start ramp, rapping? Um, I always knew how to sing. I never started rapping. I was okay. never even a rapper at this point. Okay. I was a singer. I just singer. knew how to sing. Okay, okay. Yeah, give me, I, give me a little, you, give me a little, give me a little bit that. of a, a song that you sang when you really just, you when know. When she was hurting? No. Yeah, when you want to connect in that house. Go, it's something beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Oh, when I'm hurting? She want to go with hurting. Yeah, go because ahead. that's where the pain come in when you really. I don't know about hurting. Go yeah. ahead, we'll do Or hurting. when you're in love, which one you want? I like the hurting bit. She love the hurting, you love the hurting. The hurting queen. Go ahead. Go ahead. I've come through many hard trials, through temptations on every hand. Though Satan's tried to stop me and to place my feet. I'm seeking sane through the pain and all of my sorrows, through the tears and all of my fears. Mm. The Lord was there to keep me, for He's kept me in the midst of it all. Not because I've been so faithful. Not because I've always obeyed, no, it's not because I've trusted Him to be with me all of the way, but it's because He loves me so dearly as He does. Lord, have yeah. mercy. Girl, I'm, hey, listen. I'm, I'm trying just, to hold back the tears. Listen, listen, I'm trying man. to do all of that. I had to stop. Yes. Nah, have you had vocal um, training? <sighs> Not as much uh, as I need I, to. No. When you were younger? Cause <laughs> that, when I was I younger, but up. as an adult, uh, I need to. Because your you. voice is like flawless. Oh, Thank man. you. I'm Thank listening you. to you. I'm trying to find the, the mistakes. I'm trying to find it's all right. I can't even find it. Thank it's you. Right. It's okay. Look, look. Yeah, that's you. That's you, London yeah. Adams, in the midst. Of I already know, what, know it is. what it is. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I went through a lot. You know, I started thinking about everything that ever. It just rushed right back to me. I know, like that is my song. Mm. And I remember my mom playing that song as we was younger. Um, she would play that all the time. Like when she would go through her different situations, you know, mm-hmm. with her spouses and people hurt her. And every, you know, Sunday when we got to get up early, clean up the whole house, wash it, everything that would be on her playlist. And that stuck with me throughout my whole life since wow. I was a little girl. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we going to talk.